great honor for me to stand here before congregation. And it's not the first time I've done this. I've done this in the past church, and every time I stand before the public, because this is a privilege just to stand here, not before you, but before the, the mighty Father, the, the everlasting Father. And so I thank Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for giving me a testimony to His Son. And with that, <coughs> this, this is just partially what I'm about to share with you. Um, first of all, I should be dead right now. And I should be in prison right now. And I should be out in the street doing drugs right now. I should be doing just like everybody else. Um, selfish, proud, arrogant, always angry. But I'm here because I want to share to you what he has done for me in the past. And at first, a year ago, I just got out of jail. Before that, I was in jail. Before, before that, I was in jail. And basically, I was in jail every year. I would go to jail every year. Ever since 2001, I started going to jail. So basically, I'm used to it. And I oftentimes used to um, use that as an excuse. Like, at least I don't have to feed myself. At least I don't have to work. I don't have to um, early, wake up early in the morning and sleep. I can sleep all day, basically. But the last time I, I went to jail, um, the last time, my PO, my pro officer, gave me a New Testament Bible. It was about um, small, small things. It's from the New Testament all the way to the Revelation. And during that time, when they picked me up, I, I, they had a warrant on me twice because I violated my parole twice. I don't want to tell you exactly the whole story because I don't have time. And plus, plus I'm ashamed to actually share it with you. So, um, so when they picked me up from the house, they handcuffed me, gave me the warrant for us and stuff. It's just like a regular thing for me. I'm used to it. So they took me to jail. At that time, I was um, in there. In the past, I tried to read the Bible because I was bored, basically. I was trying to read um, the Old Testament. But at that time, it, it, it never sinked in. It never made any sense to me. Because I guess I wasn't ready. No matter how much I tried to read it, it just, it just flew by like it was like reading a, a regular story or something. But this time, it was different. It was different because I read about it. Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. In the past, I've heard about Him, but I don't know anything about Him. But this time, I was actually reading Him for myself. Was from Matthew, I stayed in jail for about 10 days. I read from Matthew, and during that time, I was reading it. The hardest in my heart in the past, when I was angry, there was not a day in my life that I'm not going to get angry about. But every day, I'm angry about something. I want to punch the wall. Broke my own car twice. There's a hole in the wall, broken glass, broken this. And sometimes my family would ask my, my brother and sister, How come your brother is always angry? My brother says, Why don't you ask him? Ask him. And I don't, I always keep every, I kept everything to myself. In the, until when I was a teenager, I tried, to run, I tried to run away. When I was an adult, I tried to commit suicide three times, twice in my own car, one with gun. And almost alcohol poisoning and almost OD because of my stupid drug thing. So, during that time when I stayed in jail, I read Matthew and then find out about Jesus Christ, what he has done, a blameless, but he had compassion to the homeowner, adulterer, sinners, people that don't deserve to be loved. My whole family um, basically pursued me. Um, my mom says from her own word, from her own mouth, she said, I'm ashamed of you. From her own stepdad, she said, I'm ashamed of you. From her own brothers, she said, leave him alone. They have been there, let him rot again. Because they're basically fed up with me. And during that time, they, the more I read this word, the more I want to find out the more of you, about him. And I 
find out that he said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm not going to about that. I mean, in the past, I tried a different religion. I tried um, being a Muslim. I tried being a, in, in a, what you call that, in a, in a, in a different denomination. And none of that made any sense. I even tried <coughs> man's tradition, but none of that made any sense until I actually read it for myself. Because hearing it from somebody else is different from actually reading it for yourself. And actually, he molds me, he molds you. The more you read it, the more he gives you wisdom and understanding and compassion to those that need um, help. But at that time, I met a guy about the side of the same size as Pastor Rose, and I thought he was going to beat me up. But if you don't know his heart, he was actually humble, more humble than anybody I've ever known. Yeah, he was big, yeah, he was, he was intimidated looking, but he, was, he had a heart of, of a little kid. He had a same focus mind, but this was brought from Old Testament to the New Testament. So we end up talking, before you know, we started having a fellowship on, the, on, the, on our own table. Criminals having a fellowship on our own table. <coughs> reading the Bible, hugging the Bible. Not everyone at that time was a Bible, so we basically shared one another's Bible. And, and giving everybody's um, opinion about the Bible. And then I said, once I said to um, one guy, I said, there's nothing in this book that you cannot relate to. There's nothing. If you like, it's in here. So basically, I was in there, and then my mom finally tried to um, bail me out. I told him, when she tried to bail me, I said, enough. I said, mom, don't take me out yet. Don't take you out there, but people are trying to get out. You try to stay. Yeah, don't take me out there. In my heart, I said, if you take me out now, I'm just going to do the same old me. And I'm like, same old, all for them. Doing drugs. Basically, being selfish. So, 10 days after that, oh, while I was in jail, I, we started having a fellowship. We said, somebody um, suggested we should on our own hands and pray. Basically, this is probably a handful of, it was just about, the circle was about this big, people were praying about, you know, everybody's um, on first. But before I left, the prayer group was about this big. And you're not boasting, I'm just telling you the truth. When, when, I don't know, something, something happened to me when I was in there. It was it's not the same anymore. So my mom probably took me out, but somebody picked me up that day. So she took me, my mom's friend, Miss Mary, she took me to the um, to our store. I remember she was sitting down. Before she even could stand up, she, she had tears in her eyes. Because in the past, every time the phone rang, oh, your son's in jail again. My stepdad, oh, your son's in jail again. Oh, you, oh he's in jail again. So, it's just... So she, she, she had tears in her eyes. But before I say, after she was talking, the only thing I said to her, the first thing I said to her was, because the Bible I had in the jail house, I gave it to somebody else. And when they see my parole officer, they said, we have a hearing for you. The second time, the fire of my parole was just a slap in the hand. You know, don't do that no more. But the second time, I was facing the full extent of the law. I was facing from 10 to 30 years. From all of my, my case, back to back, all put, put together from 10 to 30 years. Because of my neglect. So basically, I had 30 days to get a lawyer. I'm, I'm, I don't have a job. I'm, I, I don't have any money. My mom has money, but she's not going to... Spend it on me because I probably end up doing something that I'm not supposed to. 30 days had passed, but during that 30 days, I started going to church, um, to go to a church with my, with my stepdad um, from, month, from Sunday and Wednesday. When I got out of jail on that day, I wanted to hear, because I gave away my Bible, I, I wanted to hear people preaching. I like people preaching. Some, I like people, I don't know, I want to hear more. I want to learn more. I, I want to share our lives about what is now going One time I showed my, my friend's shoulder, I said, God loves you, God loves you. But anyway, I, but I'm not saved because I never repented of my sins. So anyway, I had many days to get a lawyer. And during that time, I started reading God's word. I tried to finish the whole Bible because I never had that, never done it before. But I tell you what, once you finish the whole book, you feel like I want to read it more. I want that, yeah, I need something more. But anyway, I left from the one I left up from Matthew all the way to Roman. There's so many things in there that you can actually apply to your life because you know he said in his word. 
They said those that stand for righteousness and they'll be killed. Anyway, 30 days had passed, and I was supposed to see my, 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 um, yeah, 30 days had passed, and I was supposed to get a lawyer. And I couldn't get a lawyer. I could only get a lawyer or only a public defendant. I realized a public defendant would only let you off partially, not 100%. He's not even going to let you off 100%. So basically, um, but before that, let me back up. Before that, on the table that I had, from, from first it was just a regular Bible, and then a good ordinance, and then a Bible dictionary, and then a Bible commentary. He turned my, my regular desk kind of into a, like a, like a, an author. So during that, that day when I was supposed to see my, my um, the judge, the 30 days had passed, I was supposed to see him. Somebody, something told me, you better sit down and pray. So I sat down at the same table where I always speak, you know, and talk about this stuff, you know, asking for something and wait for it. So when when I start when I sat down at the table, I started talking to God just like a regular prayer, you know, okay, my shop on my mom, and just do that. And then I started telling God about why the people what they have done through the past. I started talking and telling God they did this to me. And I was telling God what I have done to them. So basically my prayer became a, a confession. Before, no, before you know it, I was ashamed. I was confessing God everything I have done in the past that I don't, I don't even tell to my own mom. I was ashamed before, before him. So I, in his words, I humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and it will exalt you in due time. So I did. So I started praying, Lord, forgive me, I'm, you know, I'm going to hell. And then in my heart I said, I surrender, I give up. And I said, Lord, if I go to prison, I'm not going to blame you. If I go to prison, I'm not going to blame my mom. If I go to prison, I'm not going to blame my family. Because you said in your word, be blameless. So therefore, I started praying and asked God to forgive me and I believe. After my prayers, I stood up, made like five steps, and in my five steps, I fell down, I fell down on my knees. And again, my life came the second time. Because I believe he rose again in Jesus. And he doesn't want anybody to perish. I read in this book, I was reading it earlier. He, he doesn't want anybody to perish. He said, hell are made for the forsaken angel. Hell is not made for us. Hell, are, hell is made for, 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 for the fallen angels. Hell, you don't have to go to hell. People go there because they, they choose to be there. And sometimes when the time they get saved, I had so many questions I, I asked my step, what about the people that never heard the gospel? Can these people be saved? Can these people be saved? Can these people be saved? How about the Catholic people? Can they be saved? And he said, in the, the word of God says, whosoever will, you could be the, the, the most richest person in the world and if you really to repent to sin and ask God to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you and ask you to come into your heart and actually repent to sin and not going back like, like the word God says a dog returning back to his vomit or a hypocrite like you know like um, in the Bible there's a lot of them there. and I you know I've done that too with being a hypocrite and stuff and I'm struggling with that so that that day when I prayed the wife of tears drove off I got my car to my mom's door, my Miss Mary took me to the DA, um, took me to the courthouse. And during that time I spoke to my my um my lawyer. The flea bargain out of 10 to 30 years was three to four years. Even two to four years is a long time in prison. And Miss Mary, she sat down next to me, I told her, here. Gave this to my brother Joseph. He, he said, Why? Because I just talked to my lawyer. He, he said that he bargain was three to four years out of in prison. She had tears in her eyes because, you know, what about my mom during that time? She's, uh, she's away, she's in Florida, she was in her, with my stepdad in business. 
So it's just me and his parent, but my brother wasn't there. The time I was going to jail, nobody listened to me. When I was trying to commit suicide, I was standing all the time. I was suppressed. Sometimes I would cry in the corner. So, growing up without a father or somebody to watch over me, you know, it's difficult. And, you know, I hope that you guys don't take your parents for granted because he loves you more than you know. Just like our father in heaven gave us his son and took a burden to to the So during that time, I started, you know, I wasn't afraid, I wasn't concerned, I was more worried about my mom. What about my mom's health? She has a blood pressure. One time she passed, she, she passed out because her blood pressure was so high. She was swelling up because of me. You know, I caused so much pain. She, she don't even tell my, my, my you know, my, my, my stepdad that, 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 that I'm a jealousy. Don't tell your stepdad to you just get out of here. Just me and you. Sometimes I go to jail. She, does, she doesn't even know I was in jail except my brother. Sometimes they bail me out. So basically, you know, that was in the past. So um, during that time, I just talked to my, my, um, my, my, my lawyer, you know, I, I tried to plead with him and say that's the best thing to do about it for the last 30 years. So, I was in court from 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I was almost the last guy because my last name was B. Yeah. So, they, he finally called me and then I'm going to come forward. You know, I, I was ready. I was ready to, you know, whatever happened, happens. You know, I was in peace. And then, when we swear in that Bible, the Word of God says don't swear or anything. So basically, when we swear in the Bible, with my right hand, or the left, I can't remember. And then when I was staring at that Bible in the corner, that's when I was, something hit me. Something struck me that reminds me from the time of the trial and tribulation of my life, I, I realized that He died for me. Regardless of whatever I had done in the past, he still died to me. And so I, I started sobbing quietly. I started sobbing. I could barely speak. And I was saying to myself, he died for me, I am nothing. My family won't die for me. My mom won't die for me. My little brother won't die for me. But he died for me. He, you know, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm several for him. So, but I believe he's still, he's still doing it right now. Whoever shall call his name, you know, in the name of the Lord, he said, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. All they had to do was call on his name. You could be saved, but just call him the one name. You could be religious from the top of your head, the very name of your tongue, and you still go to hell because you don't believe on his name. So basically, let's start our religion to our relationship. You know, let's, let's go back to our relationship. Let's go back to his court and keep, you know, keep your eye open. A lot of time I ask one of the pastors, they watch. You know, what's the meaning of the world when you keep your eye on it? I don't understand it right now. But you know, I like to learn it. But anyway, during that time, when, when I was supposed to see the judge, something happened. And I can only remember things that were happening that morning. And I can remember this from my own eyes. When he had my paperwork, said, Mr. W, I can give you 10 to 30 years right now. But you're going home. My parole officer ran to me and tapped me in the back. He's also a Christian. This is the same guy that gave me a new testament in the Bible. He said, the Lord's been looking out for you. We had the paperwork ready, lined up. All you had to do was sign it. Because you either go to prison or you're going to stay serve time in jail. But you're not going to say none of those. All, everything with the, on the paperwork was void. So basically, the judge gave me a 90 days home arrest. He sent me home. I could eat, sleep. But I'm, I'm in prison in my own house. 90 days 90 day, 90 day passed. I was in parole six years, no, three years in parole, three years in probation. After that, a month after my, my sentence, he said, I'm giving you a month. And then all of that, all your probation uh, um, time will be finished. So by the grace of God, he saved me that morning. When I, when I asked him to forgive me, he not just forgive me, he also delivered me from the judge. When I talked to this older lady, she said, she, well, every time you hear me say, she would go like this, she has so much faith in her. You don't have to boast about it. She just, you know, she just had peace. I don't know. So she said, when I told her my testimony, she had tears in her eyes, and she said,
said, you know what, God, uh, Lord Jesus actually went over the just and the farm and thank God for that. And I remember coming home that morning, driving my own car on the same hill when, when me and my mom had an accident when I should have been dead because one of the trailer fell, but this distance of me. But if my mom was wasn't going that fast, the trailer would have landed in my head. But you know it didn't at that time because it was a flooded, flooded car on the road and stuff. But the same hill, I was still being convicted, driving my own car, shaking like this door. I still don't deserve it. If you take me to prison right now, I would preach for you prison. I still don't deserve it. I was overwhelmed, overwhelmed with God's with God's love. Because I never felt that before. I tried to read his word, it made no no sense to me. But now, every time I read it, it could make me up the power. Every time you read his word, it will shape you, it will mold you, it will He said, I will give you the desire of your heart. And wait on him. Keep on waiting on him. The desire of my heart was to save my own family. Lord, keep saving them. Save my nephew. Save my mom. Watch over them. <coughs> it's, not, it's not the same anymore. You could be religious all your life, but still end up with the rest. He said, the broad is the way, but now is the way. But few people find it. And if you know, share it to others. He said, do the work of the benefits, you know? And you just give, give hope to the hopeless. And that's what he did that for me. I'm just, let me tell you this. I'm ashamed for everything I have done in the past, but I'm not ashamed of what he has done for me. He said, I will give you a new heart, a new desire, a new tomorrow, and a purpose. I said, Lord, take me where you want me to be. Help me be a better witness. You know, I forgive my brother and sister. It's just, once he, he's, he said, he said, in, in his word, like the, the potter, he said, he will change you from the inside and out. You know, you don't have to say, I'm a Christian. You will know by their fruit. You will know by, by their works. You will know them. You know, without boasting. And there's not boasting. Sin hurts. I tell you, sin, 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 sin hurts. I've been here. I've done that. And a lot, of people, a lot of people say, you don't know what, you don't understand what I've been through. I said, tell me about it. Well, you don't know what, what I'm, oh, I'm going to write. Tell me about it. He said, um, sweet to hear, and I can't remember, sweet to hear, and, and slow to speak. But anyway, I just want to thank God in the name of Jesus Christ for giving me a chance and and share with you guys because I, I you know, it's, it gave me a peace in my heart that I never had peace before. I can't explain to you, I can't you know, utter it from the word, but it gave me joy and peace in my heart every day. Even though I sin, you know, always confess your sin before and it was just an Forgive you of your sin. If you don't know what you're saying, make sure you say it. You know, and make sure you say it before it's too late. And tell others about you know, the word of God. And, you know, share, share your testimony.